Every aqueous solution has a pH. In this PowerPoint, we'll discuss how the presence of different salts may influence the pH of a solution. Salt is a general term that refers to any water-soluble ionic compound. It includes sodium chloride, table salt, as well as a wide assortment of other ionic compounds. When these compounds dissolve in water, they produce aqueous cations and anions in solution. It is the production of these cations and anions that ultimately can influence the pH of the solution. It turns out that anions can be the conjugate base of an acid, and therefore they have the potential to turn a solution basic. Cations in solution could be the conjugate acid of a base and could turn a solution acidic. It turns out that every anion can be thought of as the conjugate base of an acid and therefore has the potential to act as a base in solution. As a conjugate base, the anion can react with water and extract a proton to form a hydroxide ion. In the process, it will also form the primary acid in its associated acid conjugate base pairing. Now, not every anion actually does act as a base. The likelihood that an anion will be a strong enough conjugate base to extract a proton from water and influence the pH of a solution depends on the strength of its corresponding primary acid. In general, the stronger the primary acid, the weaker the anion is as a conjugate base and the less likely it will be to influence the pH of a solution. For example, dissolving a salt that contains chloride ion, like sodium chloride, will not produce a basic solution. The chloride anion is the conjugate base of a hydrochloric acid, primary acid. Hydrochloric acid is a very strong acid, and strong acids ionize completely. This means that the reverse process between the anion, the conjugate base, and water does not occur. In other words, an anion that is the conjugate base of a strong acid is considered pH neutral. Now, dissolving a salt that contains fluoride ion, like sodium fluoride, could potentially produce a basic solution. This is because fluoride is the conjugate base of a weak acid. This means that both the forward and the reverse reaction between the acid and its conjugate base happen. So if we dissolve fluoride ion in a solution, it will react to a small degree with water to produce the corresponding acid, hydrofluoric acid or HF, and the hydroxide ion. This table shows the relationship between the strength of an acid and its conjugate base. We can use the table to help predict whether a solution containing a specific anion will be basic or neutral. For example, we want to predict whether a solution containing nitrate anion, NO3, will be basic or neutral. An example of this might be a solution in which we've dissolved a certain amount of sodium nitrate, a salt co that contains that nitrate anion. So to predict whether it's basic or neutral, we need to figure out the strength of the nitrate ion as a conjugate base. And to do this, we need to first know what its corresponding acid is. So if we add a hydrogen to nitrate, we get its corresponding acid of HNO3. This is nitric acid, which is a strong acid. This means that the nitric acid dissociates completely in water. And the reverse process of the reaction between the nitrate ion uh, with water is not likely to happen. This means that the solution will be neutral. Let's look at another example. 
In this one, we want to predict whether a solution containing acetate ion, say from the dissolution of sodium acid, acetate, will be basic or neutral. Again, we predict the primary acid by adding a hydrogen to our acetate ion formula. We get HC2H3O2, which is acetic acid. Acetic acid is considered a weak acid. This means that it is a reversible process when it dissolves in water, and the reaction between the acetate anion as a conjugate base will occur. As a result, acetate ion in solution can react with water to produce the acetic acid as well as hydroxide ion. So acetate is the conjugate base of a weak acid, and therefore a solution of sodium acetate will be most likely basic. So we can calculate the pH of a salt solution containing the con conjugate base anion of a weak acid if we know the base ionization constant, or Kb, for that conjugate base. Unfortunately, the Kb values of conjugate bases are not easy to find. Most reference tables only list the Ka, or acid dissociation constants, for primary acids. Luckily, we can easily calculate a Kb for a conjugate base using the Ka of its primary acid. Here we have the acid dissociation equation for a primary acid with the form HA. Underneath it, we have the reaction of the conjugate base of that acid with water to produce hydroxide ion. For a salt solution, it's the second equation that defines our pH. It turns out that we can add these two reactions together. And when we do that, we multiply the equilibrium constants to get the equilibrium constant for the summed reaction. Now, if we add together the two equations here, it turns out that the acid terms cancel out and the conjugate base terms cancel out. We're left with two water molecules reacting on the left-hand side to form hydronium ion and hydroxide ion on the right-hand side. This is the autoionization of water reaction. And it means that when we multiply our two equilibrium expressions together, we get the ion product for the autoionization of water. In other words, the Ka of the primary acid times the Kb of the conjugate base must equal the Kw value for the autoionization of water. That value is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. And we now have an equation we can use to determine the base dissociation constant, or Kb value, for a conjugate base, as long as we have a reference value for the Ka, or acid dissociation constant, of its primary acid. Let's look at how we can use this relationship to calculate the pH of a salt solution of sodium formate, NaCHO2. When this salt dissolves in water, it produces a sodium cation and a formate anion. It turns out that the formate anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid, formic acid. This means that the solution will likely be basic. To calculate the exact pH of this solution, First, we write the reaction for the anion, CHO2, with water. The formate anion is a conjugate base, so it will extract a proton from water.
to form hydroxide ion and the corresponding acid, formic acid. We can construct an ICE table for this reaction and fill in our initial concentrations. The formate ion from sodium formate is 0 0.100 moles per liter. The initial concentration of formic acid will be zero, and we'll assume that the hydroxide ion concentration from the autoionization of water is very small. And this means that the initial hydroxide ion concentration will be approximately zero as well. Next, we can fill in the change row in terms of X. We'll subtract from the reactants and add to the products. We can sum the initial and change rows to get an equilibrium concentration written in terms of X. This is 0.100 minus X for our formate ion concentration and X for our formic acid and hydroxide ion concentration. We then have to calculate the value of Kb for a conjugate base formate anion. We use the reference value of Ka given for formic acid and the value of Kw or 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. We substitute these into our equation and solve for Kb. This gives us 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11 for the base ionization constant of our conjugate base, the formate anion. Next, we'll substitute our equilibrium values into our base ionization expression. Because the value that we calculated for Kb is very small, we can make the X is small approximation for our equilibrium concentration of formate anion. And this means that we can assume that the equilibrium concentration of formate ion will be approximately the same as the initial concentration of 0 0.100 moles per liter. We can then write the equilibrium expression for the conjugate base reaction with water and substitute in for the equilibrium concentrations of each species. This gives us 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11 for our Kb value equals x times x or x squared divided by 0 0.100. Rearranging and solving for x will give us 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. Before we go further, we should double check that our x is small assumption was indeed valid to make. The value of x that we calculate should be less than 5% of the initial value of the formate ion. So if we take our x value and divide it by the formate ion concentration times 100, we get 0.0024%. This is much less than 5%, so our approximation is valid. We can now use the x that we calculated to determine our actual equilibrium concentrations for each species. For the formate ion, 0.100 minus 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6 gives us essentially 0.100. The concentration of the hydroxide and formic acid in the solution are equal to x, or 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. Finally, we can use the equilibrium concentration of the hydroxide ion to calculate pOH as 5.62. pH is then simply 14 minus the pOH value or 8.38. The pH is greater than 7, as you would expect for a basic solution. If the anion of a salt is a conjugate base that can potentially turn a solution basic, then the cation of a salt is a conjugate acid that can potentially turn a solution acidic. We can generally divide cations into three categories in terms of their strength as a conjugate acid. Cations that are the counter ion of a strong ionic base are considered pH neutral. They will not act as an acid in solution. 
These include the alkali and alkali metal cations, such as sodium, potassium, and calcium, that are the counter ions of strong bases like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and calcium hydroxide. Cations that are the conjugate acid of a weak base can act as an acid, however, and turn the solution acidic. Ammonium ion and other compounds that contain an NH group are great examples of this. The ammonium ion will give a proton to water to form hydronium ion and ammonia, NH3. If ammonia is present in a solution from a salt such as NH4Cl, ammonium chloride, the solution will be acidic. And finally, metal cations that are small and highly charged will also form weakly acidic solutions. Small metal cations with high charges can all form hydrated complexes with water. The water molecules are attracted to the high charge of the metal, and once they are bound, they are more likely to donate a proton to a free water molecule and form hydronium ion. As a result, these hydrated metal ions are associated with acidic solutions. Whether or not a salt solution is acidic, basic, or neutral ultimately depends on the combination of both the cation and the anion. A neutral solution results when the salt is made up of a cation that's the counter ion to a strong base and an anion that is the conjugate base of a strong acid. Sodium chloride is a classic example. Sodium is the counter ion of the strong base sodium hydroxide, while chloride is the conjugate base of the strong acid hydrochloric acid. Neither the cation or anion has appreciable strength as an acid or base, and the solution is neutral overall. Other examples include calcium nitrate and potassium bromide. A basic solution will occur when the cation is the counter ion of a strong base, but the anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid. In this scenario, the anion of the salt is considered a weak base, and it will turn the solution basic. Sodium fluoride is a great example of this. Sodium is the counter ion of a strong base, and is considered neutral by itself. Fluoride ion, on the other hand, is the conjugate base of the weak acid, HF, or hydrofluoric acid. As a result, it's considered basic, and it will turn the solution basic overall. Other good examples with anions that are conjugate bases of weak acids include calcium acetate and potassium nitrite. Acidic solutions of salts occur when the cation is either the conjugate acid of a weak base or a highly charged metal, such as aluminum or iron. If the anion is the conjugate base of a strong acid, it does not contribute to the pH of the solution. As a result, the pH is determined by the acidic cation. Good examples of this include ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, and aluminum nitrate. In both cases, the anion is the conjugate of a strong acid. Chloride is the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid, and NO3, or nitrate, is the conjugate base of nitric acid. Both of these are strong acids, and the anions are considered neutral. NH4, the cation, in NH4Cl is the conjugate acid of the weak base ammonia, however. And aluminum in aluminum nitrate is a small, highly charged metal cation that will form a hydrated complex that acts as a weak acid. These turn the solution of these salts acidic overall. So what happens if the cation can act as a weak acid and the anion of a salt can act as a weak base? Then the pH of the solution depends on the relative strength of the cation and the anion. For example, ammonium fluoride, or NH4F. Ammonium is the conjugate acid of the weak base ammonia and generally turns solutions acidic. Fluoride anion is the conjugate base of the weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, or HF. And generally, when fluoride anion is present in the solution, it'll turn the solution basic. 
So if the solution contains both ammonium ions and fluoride ions, which way will it turn? A comparison of the relative magnitude of the Ka value for ammonium and the Kb for the fluoride ion indicates that the ammonium ion is actually a stronger acid than the fluoride ion is a base. And as a result, the solution of ammonium fluoride, NH4, will be acidic overall. Let's examine a few examples. To determine whether a solution of a salt is acidic, basic, or neutral, we first have to separate it into its individual cation and anions. Let's start with a solution containing the salt strontium chloride. The cation is strontium with a 2 plus charge. This is the counter ion of a strong base, strontium hydroxide. As a result, the cation is considered pH neutral. The anion in this salt is chloride ion. Chloride is the conjugate base of the strong acid, hydrochloric acid, or HCl. The chloride ion is therefore considered pH neutral. Since neither cation or anion contributes to the pH of the solution, the solution will be neutral overall. Now for aluminum bromide. The aluminum cation is a small, highly charged metal ion. These types of ions are weakly acidic. Bromide is the anion, and it's the conjugate base of a strong acid, hydrobromic acid, or HBr. The bromide ion is therefore pH neutral. The pH of the salt solution is determined by the cation, aluminum, and the solution will be acidic. In the same way, a solution of methylamine nitrate can be broken down into cation and anion. The cation is CH3NH3, or methylamine. This is the conjugate acid of the weak base, methylamine, and is therefore acidic. The anion nitrate is the conjugate base of the strong acid nitric acid, or HNO3. Nitrate ion is therefore pH neutral. The solution of the uh, the pH of the solution will be determined by the cation, therefore, and will be acidic. We'll look at one last example, sodium formate. The cation sodium is the counter ion of a strong base, sodium hydroxide. It's considered pH neutral. The anion formate is the conjugate base of the weak acid, formic acid. It is considered weakly basic and the solution will be basic overall. So in summary, when a salt dissolves in water, the cation and anion of that salt can turn the solution either acidic or basic. If the cation is the conjugate acid of a weak base or a small highly charged metal, it will act as an acid in the solution. And if the anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid, it will act as a base in solution. We can calculate the pH of a salt solution, but first we have to determine the Kb, or dissociation constant, for a conjugate base anion, or the Ka, or acid dissociation constant, of the conjugate acid cation. Since these values aren't commonly listed in reference tables, we have to determine them but we can use the relationship between the Ka and Kb of any conjugate acid base pair. This relationship is that the Ka times the Kb value of the conjugate acid base pair must always equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. Once we've calculated the K value for our conjugate acid or base, we can then complete an equilibrium and pH calculation.